Evening everybody, uh, apologise for my video yesterday, it was kind of busy and the weather's been, well, really crap. So, uh, just going to do a little video on uh, the St George Illawarra Dragons as a continuation theme for the uh, the NRL videos that I've been doing. Um, they finished just outside the 8 last season. Uh, they, they've had a few roster moves. Here's the crucial thing, it's very crucial how... St George go forward. It's not that their squads rotate a little bit. They've got some good depth, they've got a decent squad. To get in the eight consistently is hard. They've been reasonably successful in in the NRL era, so they're not like a bad side. Their issue has been not scoring enough tries in the last couple of seasons. They're starting to rectify that. Here's the thing though. You've got Josh Dugan who's playing the centre as a fullback, and you've got Gareth Widdop, who and they both had really good World Cups. Gareth Widdop has been a sensation at fullback for England. Now this poses questions for the coach. Did they play Widdop at fullback and put someone else into the halves? Do they keep Widdop in the halves and have Dugan at fullback? Or do they put Dugan in the centre, Widdop at fullback and someone else in the halves? <laughs> it's, it's now a, a coaching conundrum because Josh Dugan is, as a fullback, he's just a ball runner. He's, he's, his passing skills are not that of, of Billy Slater or Cameron Munster or some of the young fullbacks coming through. He's not a Rasmus Has like a Ben Barber was. Josh Dugan is is just a you know a hit up fullback. He will run the ball back. He will just run it back. In the centres, he's very similar. He's a very combative centre. He's good at tackling. He's good at running. His his passing game and his kicking game leave a bit a bit to be desired. Um, but with a fullback, he can do more. He's a more rounded player. But then that weakens the the halves. So that's the the issue for St George is. Who plays at fullback? Who plays in centre? And who plays in halves? And those two players are key. If Josh Dugan um, plays in centres, he's that's his role. If he plays at fullback, that's his role. He he will just run it up, hit it up, act like another forward. With the widow, does it make them more dynamic? It probably does. Having widow fullback and Dugan in the centres probably makes their back line more dynamic. But at the same time, it, they lose the creativity in the halves. So for them going forward, the coach has got to work out: does he want widow at the fullback or in the halves? Or do it at fullback or in the centres, because that is where it is crucial for them. Their forward pack is decent. Their back line is decent. They've got a decent, well balanced side. It's just these key few little positions in the spine crucial, because Widdop now has shown in this World Cup that he can play at fullback. Does that mean Dugan now? Definitely stays at centre, and if it's not with a fullback, someone else. So he's, he's he's shown something that is now posing a conundrum. And with the way St George have not been scoring enough tries over a significant period of time, although last season they scored more than the season before, that has been their their Achilles heel is not scoring enough. So would rejigging the back line in such a way mean they score more? With Widdop joining the line late and creating an overlap, for for example. Because obviously him playing at fullback in the World Cup for the majority of the time for England was an uh, inspired decision by Wayne Bennett. It obviously didn't work in the final and we didn't win, but because of injuries here and there and, and players not quite performing, throwing him at fullback, he has played there before. Halfback is his preferred position, but fullback worked. He worked exceptionally well and it, it is now posed going forward. There's an Illawarra, so George Illawarra Dragons. Back from staff, coaching staff, a lot of questions to ask. Um, and seeing Widder put fullback was strange, but at the same time, exceptionally exciting because the way he, you know, he's not as big as Dugan though. So when it comes to aerial battles and tackling, he's that little bit smaller. So physicality could be the issue. Um, but it's a good question to have, it's a good problem for a coach to have. But that will it unbalance the side if he starts moving these chess pieces around. I mean, the Dragons are a very average NRL side at the moment. They flirt with the finals or they miss out on the finals. They're in that middle band, really. They have been on good runs, but they just end up 7th to 10th. They're in that block where they just make it into final way or just miss out. I see them being very similar this upcoming season. Um, 
they have a decent balanced side, it's just other sides have that just a little bit more X Factor, a little bit more, and they're sort of in a rock and a hard place because they are consistently stable, they have a consistently balanced side, both pack, packs, and now with the certain players can play in several positions in the back line, that makes it a li maybe a little bit more X Factor maybe when they need it. Tactical adjustment, bring another half on, move someone to full back and, and and move it all around a little bit and it throws questions into the air. Do you want an extra kicker on the pitch? Do you want an extra running fullback on the pitch? Because you've now got two players who can play fullback regularly in the back line, in Dugan and Widdop. That is the crucial this is the crucial bit. You've got players like Vaughan in the forwards who are absolute machines. So there's a good balance in the side. Does the coach risk it? Anyway. I thought that was a bit more off the cuff, a bit less planned than um, the previous NRL videos, but with my internet constantly going off, the weather being really cold, and I want to get this up and loaded, so we've sort of had a little bit less preparation on this one, but it's an issue that, you know, it's, a, it's a, St George is a very interesting club, they, they're um, outside Sydney, they're in Wollongong, um, on the coast, they are a merger of two clubs, so they're sort of like the West Tigers, in, in a sense, except they're the successful version of what West Tigers should be. Um, they draw well, they always have a large, you know, good set of fans at the game, they do draw well, they're well supported. Um, they're just an average side, in a, in a good way. They're not like appallingly bad, and they're not X-Factor Melbourne Storm good, they are just steady, slow and steady. Small roster moves here, they they have lost a couple of forwards who have gone to other clubs, and I've mentioned them in previous videos. But with players like Vaughan in the pack, and that, that that was a shrewd move getting him from Canberra when they did last year. Um, they've lost Russell Packer though, but he hasn't performed in the World Cup very well either. So maybe that is a, a smart move as well. But anyway, we'll have to wait and see what happens. It's all to do with balance of the side and how balanced the side is. Should we have stayed in the halves? We've got a fullback. It's all these are all interesting questions for some George Dragons fans to have. Um, it's interesting for observers to look and see what happens in the upcoming season. Um, we shall have to see what happens come March, April time when they've finalised the squad, got the last few signings in place make sure everyone's fit and healthy in the off-season and they go into the Auckland Nines in February and then go into the main season and that's when we see what they can produce. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll have some more videos for you after my, my first day of work. I'll start a new job tomorrow, so I'll have some more videos for you when I get in from work. Weather for me, so I'll get to work yet. Um, and then, yeah, please like, subscribe, place your comments below and I will try my best to upload some more videos for you tomorrow. Night.